uh, quorum with three of our five members so we can uh, get started with business. Um, Representative Goulet uh, was under the weather, so he's not going to join us today. Uh, he was going to present um, the uh, bill that he wants to send to the council uh, related to the uh, ban on legacy admissions uh, resolution that we passed uh, previously. Um, he will join us at the next meeting and I'll make sure that we have uh, the text in advance so that you can uh, read it before our committee votes votes it out to the full board. Mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned for that. Okay. Uh, thank you, um, committee members, for uh, your patience and work on the math resolution. Um, I was glad to see we were able to pass that uh, at the last meeting and um, that Representative Best uh, can uh, draw from that as he joins the task force. Um, the next thing on our agenda is to debrief on the panel that we had at the public meeting. Um, I, for one, am excited about uh, the idea of having uh, different pathways uh, for um, students to pursue. Uh, I do have some concern that um, Representative Chang, you mentioned uh, at the meeting and mm -hmm. Kathleen, you have mentioned previously about um, making sure we're not tracking students, we're, we're not, um, you know, consigning them to a pathway or, or um, just to make sure that it's student, students are choosing the pathways that they want to pursue and that we are yeah. equipping, equipping them to succeed in whichever one that is. So, um, yeah, that's my concern as well. I just put in the chat, um, District of Columbia actually was sued years and years and years and years ago about tracking um, mm -hmm. by uh, the famous person who Stuart Hobson is named after Julius Hopkins uh, because his children were actually tracked and his daughter could not get into a particular school. So that is my concern is that we'll start schools will because that's the easiest way for them maybe to, you know, their whether it's their report card or whatever the case may be to kind of start making it look better by putting kids in, in different tracks and stuff like that. Um, so I am concerned about that as we go, you know, we go forward and, um, yeah, that's my concern. All right. Yeah. So, so let's, um, let's keep that in mind as we continue. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Auss Aussie must be thinking about that as well and, and thinking through that and, um, but I did, appreciate, that. I did, I really appreciated the, uh, the discussion, especially, I think I keep bringing up North Dakota is where mm -hmm. they, uh, it was the group um, and their process. I was really impressed by their process. It just stood out to me how they go about it, how they engage the families. And it's more of a selection of work with the families, which mm -hmm. is always important to me is how you engage families as you're making these different uh, decisions about how a child will um, matriculate through school um, and recognizing what their talents are. I think we have a great problem of that right now because I don't think we have enough vocational schools for those who want to go to vocational schools. And, you know, their parents are like, you know, like the person testified, they're just ready to, to quit. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I really, North Dakota was amazing to me. Yeah, I, I uh, was interested in what they're doing as well. And um, I, I asked, I forget the gentleman's name, but I asked him about kind of trends and in, in demographics and, and he, I remember him saying that at least so far, uh, he was saying it was kind of being used across the board and there was no, you know, particular um, uh, pattern. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think if we can continue to look at um, the states who are already implementing uh, similar ideas, uh, we can kind of see what to look out for and what to, maybe what safeguards they're using or, or policies they have to to prevent that. Um, any other thoughts? Uh, I guess the the other big thing that came out of the panel was uh, the options for special ed students, making sure that there were uh, diploma options and not just, or, or more diploma options and not just certificate 
Uh, any any thoughts on that? I've talked a lot. I'll let uh, Representative Chang go before I, I give my comments, if he has comments. Sure. Yeah, please. I'm still developing mine, Jack. Okay. Um, special education, that whole thing just speaks to my spirit, my heart, and stuff like that. And people I know who have uh, special needs children and stuff like that, I hate that we have a certificate, you know, so to speak. Um, and if we can make sure that they get the type of diplomas that they need, I know what that means for a lot of people when they go out into the world to have a diploma as opposed to a, you know, a certificate. Um, even when, you know, we know that once we get to college, a certificate is not on the same level as the diplomas that we receive for our degrees and everything like that. So why would we do any less for our students who we know that will be competing for jobs regardless of their special needs? Um, so I, I'm looking forward to that part. I, it, it just spoke to me. Very good panel. I I agree that that piece and and I think it's it'll be timely for LaJoy to be joining us on the board, um, presumably, right? Um, the high the probability, that, high probability. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the piece that I am, I I. I got really, uh, I, it was a, it was a shift for me in how I thought about things when, um, uh, one of the panelists, uh, was encouraging us and repeatedly encouraging us to think about how students can get credits. And so do have an ask for our team, uh, to look more into kind of what that actually, what, what those options even are of, you know, if uh, if a student were to go get an apprenticeship, if a student were to have an alternate, what, what are the alternate ways for students to be able to fulfill a credit in other contexts yes. uh -huh. based on federal requirements, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's just not something that I know the intricacies of and would love to learn more about because mm -hmm. I do think that would give us some interesting openings and flexibilities um uh or give us some room to advocate for some some more some more leniency and flexibility in how um how students were able to obtain the credits that are required right right now on so, um yeah. on a federal level there's extremely few rules about what a diploma can be and what a credit can be like for a diploma it's basically that um there's like a minimum standard and you can't have you can't be counting in your like graduation rates a diploma that is less rigorous or um that doesn't have isn't aligned with like specific state standards um and so you can give a student something called a diploma that may or may not actually count in the like adjusted cohort graduation rate for ESSA and for like the accountability system. So on a federal level, there's not a regulation about what you can say as a diploma or what you can say as graduation, but there is specifications around what you can count towards like your official ESSA graduation rate. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And, and on that note, Kathleen, um, listening to principal um, Nace mm -hmm. and he spoke a lot of, in his testimony about the rigor of what they're doing at DCI. I would be interested in examining that a little bit more of how they're doing, you know, although they're still calling it a certificate, he's talking about basically the classes that they do is still rigorous. DCI is still seen as one of our most rigorous charter schools in the city. Um, so it'd be interesting to kind of see what they're, how they're looking at it and how it, compares to what we would classify as a diploma um, and the requirements around diploma. That I just would be interested in that. And um, Principal Nay said he was really open to talking to anybody more about um, any of the stuff that they're doing. So I can... I think I'll put a school on my list of schools to visit. Yeah. I, know, I know it's in Fraser's ward, but I think I, he'll allow me to come out there and visit. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you are uniquely qualified. You've got, you've got all the words. Yeah. I, I I do kind of, but I try to be respectful. <laughs> um, thank you. So those are two. Uh, maybe they're not even distinct, but um, two things that we can look deeper into. Um, just what are the flexibilities? Um, and how that intersects with uh, what's required. And then um, kind of looking around at, at what schools already are doing in DC around um, those kinds of flexibilities. Um, yeah, and we do, we do have regulations now that allow a, an LEA to apply and, or allow a school to apply a DCPS school to apply to DCPS or a charter LA to apply to the charter school board to award credits that aren't based on like Carnegie unit 120 hours. So that's something that schools can do now, but there's like an application process to get it. Um, and uh, and um, I think it was like eight or so high schools are using it now. Yeah, I think but that's right. There's not a lot of like understanding about what that is and what what kind of opportunities you can take advantage of with that and what we would need to expand the regulations to encompass. And we have a list of those schools, right? Um, I don't have it right at my fingertips, but we can share that um, with you because uh, there might be others, other schools in addition to DCI that we can connect with and, and just kind of get some more information about what they're doing, how they're using it. All right, so we can f follow up on those items. Um, and, you know, the, the idea with having the, the panel at this time was to just kind of prepare us as we begin this long, longer process with Aussie. Uh, so I think it's helpful to have those things in mind. Uh, I'm glad that, that we are primed to um, keep those at the forefront as we go through the process. Uh, I did want to provide an update which um vice president patterson i i think you were at the um the meeting with aussie when they discussed their uh kind of adjusted timeline but I i'll share that with uh, representative chang and for the public um they are hoping to wrap the the profile work um possibly by the end of this month but definitely by the end of this calendar year mm -hmm. um, and then they also have, uh, for the graduation requirements specifically, uh, they have a steering committee that's meeting at the end of October. Uh, it's going to include uh, university presidents, teachers, parents, uh, both sectors should be represented. Um, and Aussie has uh, so that they will share what proposals are emerging from uh, that work and we'll continue discussion uh, through the beginning of 2025. And I had from the notes of the leadership meeting that they would have a draft by fall of 2025. Um, so that's a, li a little bit different than what I was had been thinking. I thought it was coming a little bit earlier. Um, but that's uh, where we are now. And so I just want us to, you know, continue um, engaging and preparing. And uh, I, I'm sure that, uh, you know, Aussie tuned into the panel. And so they'll be thinking about uh, the things that, that we've brought up uh, as well. Does that sound right, Vice President Patterson? Yes, sir, it okay. does. Yeah, you're on point. All right. Thank you. Um, so let's keep working on that. I think, um, you know, certainly the things that you've already mentioned, and there may be other things that come up that we want to uh, make sure that we educate ourselves about um, in preparation for uh, receiving the, um, the draft. Uh, and as Aussie flags things that, that are coming out uh, from the steering committee and other work we can you know pursue those things as well 
I think that's all we've got at the moment on graduation requirements. And uh, so we can move to our next item, which is uh, literacy. Um, Representative Chang, I don't know if you've yeah. had any, um, you know, we were going to follow up with uh, the participants in the event that we had. Uh, I don't know if you've been getting more feedback from the survey uh, or anything, but if you have any updates on that, we'd love to hear them. Uh, and also just kind of as we turn towards uh, our budget advocacy, uh, if you could say if there's anything that you're looking at in particular. I know last year we fought. Yeah hard to get the, uh, you know, the training for kindergarten teachers. Um, yep. Would love to know kind of where you see the next yeah. steps. Great, thank you. So one of the things that my, uh, that I've been getting feedback and, and I, I, um, I, I do think that people started to not fill out the form and started to email me. So, and, and just call <laughs> me and give me some feedback. So I will, I will share some of the things that I have been hearing. One of the things is, um, uh, making sure that, and, uh, making sure that there are alternative pathways, um, to getting the certification done beyond the online TNTP program, which, you know, the, the feedback that, and we, we knew this early on, we just didn't have the budget to, to provide anything else right. Um, at the time, uh, because it is not uh, interactive, right? And so what are the other alternatives that we have at our disposal to be able to prepare more students for it? I think, you know, you all know that I am a big fan of the DC Reading Clinic, so how do we bolster that? But then also how do we, and I always think, you know, I love the idea of being able to bolster our own capabilities in-house. So then um, also thinking about UDC and how do we build partnerships between um, our teachers and UDC to be able to provide this. And so uh, I just had a phone call with the team that is working on Aussie's apprenticeship program at UDC, which is 50 teachers, uh, 50 per professional educators in that currently teach in uh, DCPS or DC Public Charter School who can go through uh, the UDC program, uh, education program, and, you know, making sure that and working on how do we support UDC to become one of the uh, approved training programs on the Aussies list, right, I think is a really interesting possibility to resolve some of those concerns. Um, and those are those are already funded. So they are not currently? Um, no. On, on that list? Okay. Uh-uh. Um, and does that mean that they haven't been um, appraised or they just haven't? Um, it's a right. little bit of both, right? So it's a little bit of they need to bolster up their structure that are a C piece of the, of okay. the training and then Aussie needs to appraise them. Got it. So would, would love, love help there to, to right? I think that moves us more, that's less policy, more kind of bully pulpit, raise the... <laughs> raise the raise this as a as an idea help to help to shepherd it forward role of ours right yeah. um, and make sure that we are implementing what we have put forward with with fidelity the other piece is um and i've flagged this for our leadership um we have a renewal for our um comprehensive literacy grant from this the federal government which is, I think it looks like a substantial amount of money. And I just want to remind the public and everyone on this call that, uh, you know, it, it, it was, it's money that we have, it's a renewal of a grant that we've had, right? So it's not like we can magically use it to spend on something new um, necessarily, right? So, um, but it is, uh, it is, I think, uh, an opportunity for us to make sure that we're aligning our strategy together properly. So um, I've been asking our leadership and um, we have we have one of our uh, SBOE leaders on this call, uh, Dr. Patterson, uh, to, to ask Aussie at the next leadership meeting to learn more about what they have in mind for that and 
where they are already thinking about alignments um, to, to what we're doing around the science of reading. Will do, sir. Yeah, to get something on the agenda, um, the general SOP for that is to send an email. Right. Just so, like, I, I know Josh has a lot going on in his brain. Yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate you doing the, the, the proper thing, the procedural thing, Kathleen. Yeah, so if you send me an email, it'll get on the agenda for us to ask them about. Um, and I can reiterate it in the well, meeting. Uh, would, you, would you do me a favor, Dr. Patterson, and check? I, I have sent the email. Okay. Uh, so if, if okay. you, if it's, yep, thank you. Yep. And I, and I believe you have and everything like that. So, um, so it'll I'm be there. Uh, sorry. I know that Courtney, the, yep. I'm sorry. I was breaking up. Okay. Yep. I'll start again. Um, I know that compliance reports on the addressing dyslexia and other reading difficulties amendments act is uh, set to come out in November, I believe. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for um, from those? I will be looking at the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. But thanks for flagging. Sure. I'll I'll be looking too. Um, thank you for that update. Uh, the next thing that we have on our agenda is Civics Week, um, and I'm kind of reluctant to go too deep into it without Representative Best here. Um, but I know he shared with the whole board at the last uh, working session, um, and Director Butler noted that there there is a a designated Civics Learning Week um, that happens in March. Uh, that is sponsored by the National Council for the Social Studies. Um, so I think what I would like to do is just follow up with uh, Representative Best to see if uh, if that is in, in line with what he was thinking or um, if maybe he's thinking of something a, a little bit different. Uh, if it is aligned, um, then I think maybe we could uh, poke around and see what sort of resources they provide and and see if there's a way for us to um, adapt that for our DC context. Um, I I will ask Representative Best, but I'm curious to what what you both think about um, how we might want to promote this uh, if it's um, something where we want to um, invite schools to participate and if they do want to participate, then we would kind of point them in the direction of uh, certain resources or um, if there's another approach or thought um, for how we could uh, just promote the idea of the Civics Week and, and getting uh, schools excited about um, doing one. Hmm. And it's okay if you don't have anything jump to mind. I'll I'll definitely follow up with Representative Best. And I don't have a <clears throat> personally. I don't have a a lot that jumps to mind. Um, I know we need to promote it. I know, you know, some of my thoughts um, during Civics Week, in particular to the District of Columbia, I start to think more so about our particular situation as a non-state, so to speak, and how we can use it also to 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 kind of promote that and, and people's understanding of that who have children in schools and stuff. And some of the groups that could be possibly that could work with us to get information to schools or provide information to schools. Um, you know, I don't know if that's the week that we kind of focus on, you know, on DC, you know, with social studies or whatever the case may be. Um, but those are the type of things that kind of swim around in my head. I would love to hear what best a representative best has in mind and stuff like that. But, you know, we have some amazing groups that talk about uh, statehood and, and DC situation. Mm -hmm. um, those are the type of things I try to combine the two um, as an educational type of thing and being active in what you can do uh, around civics and our particular situation here in the district. That's just what comes to mind. And I'll combine that with anything our, that representative best and the committee comes up with. Yeah, thank you. That's a good flag. Um, something that wouldn't be in a, a national organization's 
uh, materials most likely. Um, right. But there are lots of lots of opportunities to supplement with uh, local organizations. Yeah. Right. And kids can get in. Kids can really get involved in it. There's lots of things that they can do. And there's actually a, a young, like a student's group that talks about statehood and stuff like that and what they do and stuff like that, that Marcus Bachelor works with, where I knew he used to work with because I was okay. at the White House when he got arrested one time, <laughs> working with him <laughs> and that, he was still a student at that particular time, him and Treyon at that particular time. He was not a council member at that time. Um, so, yeah. All right, good. Thank you. That's a good, uh, good flag. Uh, so I, I will follow up with Representative Best um, to get a little more uh, of what he's thinking on that. Um, and I'll let him know uh, your notes as well. Uh, and the next uh, item for us is the health and PE standards. Um, so Aussie, uh, you know, gave the presentation at the working session and uh, their timeline uh, has them releasing draft standards for public comment in January, February uh, of next year. And um, as Kathleen uh, rightly pointed out, January and February will come quickly, uh, even though uh, it seems like a ways away. Um, so the question is what kind of engagement we, wi we might want to do um, as a board uh, if we want to do something similar to what we did with social studies standards, um, I think uh, those were not uh, especially well attended, but but they were uh, very substantive. Uh, so it was it was kind of a you know hearing from fewer people perhaps, but getting uh, some pretty good feedback. Uh, or if there are other models, uh, I know Representative Chang, you often uh, remind us that. Uh, going to where people are uh, is is an effective way. Um, also, sometimes can be hard to to manage uh, that with our uh, capacity limitations. Uh, but any um, thoughts or or desires for how we engage? Um, on well, um, with with that preface, you know, maybe one way is that each of us commits to doing one PTO. At least, you know, just going to a PTO meeting for a school in our wards and mm -hmm. when they're already planning to meet rather than hosting a separate meeting and right. having this uh, proposing that this is a topic as part for part of the meeting. Right. And mm -hmm. no, it won't be a it won't get to every school right that way, but it will allow us to at least go deeper with some schools across the city. Right. OK. I think that's a great idea. I, I agree, um, but I, you know, I want to make sure we can disseminate information as much as possible. I know, uh, Representative Henderson, you guys have a great um, uh, education council, so to speak. Um, and if we could also work with the education councils, I know mm -hmm. is, is doing a lot better, still needs some improvement. Ward 7 has a great one, and then the other wards ha have outstanding ones. Ward 6 is probably sets the standard. Um, mm -hmm. But if we could also kind of make sure that we kind of work with them in disseminating the information, they have such a great way. And even if we get on their agenda, they just have such a great way of get, getting information out and getting feedback. Um, when I look at Ward 6 in particular, they're just amazing at every single issue that comes out and getting responses and testifying and having input. Um, so that's just just my thought process around them in particular. Um, but yeah, if okay. we can talk about education councils as well. All right, that sounds good. Um, I know that uh, on the front end uh, that um, Aussie will be engaging uh, a lot of different groups, um, but I think um, I, I don't recall them having either PTOs or ed councils on their list. Yeah. So that's def definitely a good way to kind of follow up. And I'm sure there's overlap, you know, in a lot of these. You know, you there usually is Representative Henderson. It's just sometimes mm -hmm. they leave some off because, as as we all know, some of them are not operational as well as the others. And if right. we can kind of help them push the issues for PTOs and um, councils, education councils, just to keep them involved. I know they they did some you know wonderful groups, but as I saw last time when they were talking about the uh, graduation profile, they really hadn't engaged East of the River. Seven and eight was not up there. Um, so, you know, just 
to hold their feet okay. to the fire and keep them accountable. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. And, um, uh, yeah, let's do that. We will definitely do that. Um, I think that's it. Is there any other uh, new business or announcements anybody wants to bring to the committee? All right. Uh, <laughs> None at all, Mr. Chair. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Um, Thank you. Uh, like, like I said, uh, we do expect um, Representative Goulet to come back uh, next month with uh, more on the legacy admissions legislation and, of course, um, graduate requirements and uh, learning standards will be kind of our, our primary uh, work uh, as we turn into the new year. Uh, but thank okay. you both for joining and um, we will continue this good work. Thank you. Thank you for a great meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm.